versa. I can evaluate logarithms with and without a calculator, and I can solve basic logarithmic problems. You'll also be able to graph a log or at least identify graphs of logarithms, especially using transformations. So this particular lesson is also broken into, I believe, three, being three different installments, so that you can take breaks between listening to it. Screen time, I know, does get old. So first off, logarithms. Well, a log is an exponent. An exponent is a log. Why? Because if b raised to the y is equal to x, then log base b of x is equal to y. A log asks the question, what exponent do I put on base b to get x? If you think of it, log base b of x is equal to y is the same thing as saying, what is the exponent? Okay, here this is my empty box. What is the exponent that I put? I need to fill in this box in order to get x b is what we call the base. Here is one way of saying it, a second way, and a third way saying the same thing. A common logarithm is base 10. Base 10 is the, called the common log because that's what we use to count in. The natural logarithm is base e. We're going to talk about e a little bit more. You learned a little bit about e in lesson one, but it is the base of the natural log. Now, Logarithm with base b, we're going to let the base and y be positive numbers so that b does not equal 1. Because remember, 1 to the 5th power, 1 to the 7th power, 1 to the 5,000th power is still 1. So b is not 1. The logarithm of y with base b is denoted by log base b of y. b is a subscript. Please, when you're writing it, make it a little tiny one. Make it a subscript. Don't do not do this. Some people when they're writing. Okay, this looks like log base 10 of bx. You need to make sure that when you're doing this, if b is your base, then b is a little subscript. He's down here. Okay, so log base b of y is equal to x if and only if b to the x is equal to y. A log is an exponent. When you evaluate a log, you're finding an exponent. Now, sometimes it can help a lot to go back to something that you're used to, in this case, exponential form. So to convert an expression from logarithmic form into exponential form, we exponentiate both sides. That's the official mathematical term. It's a big word, and I know you can all look at me and go, huh, what? Exponentiate? Don't know what it means. Well, I came up with a different word. The answer for log base b is an exponent, so let b push up the exponent. Okay, here's my base. If I want to rewrite it as an exponential, I'm going to let the base run underneath the equals, and when it come up, comes up the other side, it's going to push the a up, so the a becomes an exponent. So x is equal to b to the a. So we want to rewrite log base 3 of 81 equals 4. This is an expression or an equation that's actually solved. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 3, and it's going to come over here, and it's going to push the 4 up. So you wind up with 81 is equal to 3 to the 4. Again. Our 4 is going to run underneath and push the 0 up. And so you wind up with 1 equals 4 to the 0. Remember log base 4. So 4 is the base. That should immediately tell you which one's the base. Okay? Now, these are pretty easy once you get the idea of it. So run through these last few. Pause the video. Run through these on your paper and then come back and check. And come on now, if this little guy here can do a push-up, so can you. I know, it looks a little more like a down dog, but it's okay. We back? So, check your answer. How did you do? Now, by the way, anytime you use a fraction, you should put parentheses around a fraction. 
that way indicates the whole fraction is raised to that exponent. Making sense? I hope so. On to special logarithms. These are the special logarithms. For starters, y equals 2x is the exponential. y equals log base 2 of x is the inverse. Remember that inverses are reflections across the identity line, if I can actually. There we go. So there's our identity line. Okay. And remember that here's y equals 2 to the x. A log is simply the inverse. A log has a vertical asymptote, whereas an exponential has a horizontal asymptote. More about graphing later. Let's go back to the special logs. Log base b of 1. We don't care what the base is. We know this answer is going to be 0. Why? Because any number, any base raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. We also know that log base b of b. If I push this up, what exponent do I put on b to get b? That's just 1. It doesn't matter what the base is. b raised to the first power is b. These are our special ones. These are the first two points that we can plot. We can graph these, okay? You raise it to the first when x is 1, okay? You get b. Got to look at your log. Look at your exponential. Exponential. Blah. Okay? Now, evaluating logarithmic expressions. Again, this just keeps reminding you a log is an exponent. I want to evaluate the expression log base 2 is 64 without a calculator. It's not hard. When you see this expression in your mind, think 2 to what power gives 64? What exponent am I going to put on 2 to get 64? Well, hopefully, you know it's 6. So since 2 to the 6 is 64, log base 2 of 64 is equal to 6. Remember that the answer to a log is the exponent. This next one, ooh, log base 1 half of 0.25. That looks ugly and difficult, but might look a little bit easier if you thought about it like this. Log base 1 half of 1 fourth. Okay, so now is equal to some value. So now if I push this up, I'm going to get 1 fourth is equal to 1 half raised to some power. Now it's really easy, or hopefully it's really easy to see that the answer is 2. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. When you're mixing decimals and fractions, especially when you're talking about something new like logs that you're not familiar with, it can be a little bit confusing. So convert everything to the same format, fractions or decimals. In this case, I think that the decimals are e or the fractions are easier to work with. Evaluating the expression log base one third of 27. Okay, well, I need to think about one third to what power gives 27? Well, first off, I want it to be a negative. So the first thing I do is say, I'm going to make this a negative exponent because now this is going to flip the 3 on top. Now 3 to what power is 27? And that's 3. So thinking through it like that, I get 1 third raised to the negative 3 is 27. So log base 1 third of 27 is negative 3. Remember the negative here says that I'm going to do the reciprocal. It does not mean that one-third is negative. Evaluating log base 4 of 2. 4 to what power gives 2? Well, remember, it's a square root. Square roots mean we need rational exponents or fractions, which is 1 half. 4 to the 1 half, or the square root of 4, is 2. So my log is 1 half. Use the 4 that we've just done and try these two. Log base 5 of 125 is equal to what? And log base 8 of 2 is equal to what? Do 
did you get three? And did you get one third? Okay, remember here I need eight to what power? I need the cube root of eight. Over here I need five cubed. Okay, inverse log properties. This page takes a little bit of time and concentration. This is more think about it and all of a sudden you're going to get this aha moment. It's hard to just look at it and take it. So inverse log properties. Recall that log base a of a to the x means the exponent you raise a to in order to get a to the x. Well, what exponent am I going to put on a to get a to the x? I'm going to use x. Again, remember, one does, one undoes. Log base a of a. One does, one undoes. My answer is the exponent. If this base and this base are the same, the exponent answer is right there in front of me. Okay? So a raised to the log base a of x is equal to x. Recall that log base a of x means the exponent you raise a to in order to get x. Okay, so I want to know up here is what exponent do I put on a to get x? That's x. Now, let's look down here and we're going to try a couple of these. 10 raised to the log 23 is equal to 23. How do I know that? Because I'm I've got an exponential and a log. One does, one undoes. Log 23 equals the exponents used to raise 10 to a power that results in the value 23. So this right here is going to be an exponent that when I put it on 10, will get 23. Well, I don't know what that exponent is, but I just put it on 10, so I'm going to get 23. Over here, this one we can break down a little bit more and say I've got log base 2 of 8 to the x. I've got log base 2 of 2 cubed, log base 2 of 2 to the 3x. These two cancel each other. I've got a log and an exponential using the same bases, so they cancel. Okay, Try these two. See if you kind of get it. It still might feel a little fuzzy, but it gets to you after a while. And it does take a little bit to, to get the aha. Did you get this one? 10 raised to the log base 10 of x is x. I do and I undo. Log base 3 of 81 to the x. First thing you want to do is change 81 to base 3. So log base 3 of 3 to the 4 raised to the x. Log base 3 of 3 to the 4x. I've got like bases. Boom. Got the 4x. Now, Going, moving forward, we want to find the inverse of these functions. Well, remember what we do to find inverses, okay? Our first step is going to swap x and y. So we do that. I swap x and y. Now I want to solve for y. Well, that means I'm going to use the push-up. So the 1 half is going to come over here and push up. 1 half raised to the x is equal to y. I just converted it to exponential form. Those are the inverses. Here I have y is equal to the natural log of x minus 2. Step 1, swap x and y. Great. Now solve. Now here, remember that x equals the natural log is the same thing as log base e of y minus 2. We do not ever write log base e, we write natural log. But this is, this is our shorthand, this is the mathematical version of log base e. So now if this comes over here and pushes it up, I'm going to have e raised to the x is equal to y minus 2. Now I just have to add 2 to both sides, and I have found, I found the inverse. Since we did those two, these next two are similar to the first two. Pause the video and try these. Did you get 2 to the x equals y? And e to the x minus 7 is equal to y? If you need to, pause the video.
Steps are the same, swap X and Y, and then convert. You do the push up, and then you add or subtract if you have something else left over. Excellent. At this point, I'm going to stop this part of the video so that you can take a break, and when you come back, watch Lesson 2B, Graphing Logs. Thanks.